Hello everyone, welcome to the another video and in this video I'm going to talk about how can we create our own custom copilot with our own data using Azure OpenAI and Azure AI search. So as a data input we will be using MD files and this is completely no code solution it's just plug and play you just need to set up the configuration and run few commands and you will have your copilot up and running as well as integrated in Teams. So let's see how we can do this. So the very first thing you need to do is, I'm using VS Code and hoping the same for you. So what you need to do here is, the very first thing you need is to go ahead and install the Teams extension. So for that, you can click on this extensions panel and search for a Teams toolkit. So this is the one I'm going to use and I'm using the pre-release version as you can see here because this feature is recently launched and it is available only in the pre-release right now. So just switch on to the pre-release version and get this installed. So once this is installed, you will see that a uh, new icon got added on your toolbar on the left hand side. So if you will click on this particular thing, click uh, create a new app. If it will open up a dialog something like this wherein you can select your options and the very first option you can see here is to build your custom copilot. So we are going to select this one and before we get started make sure that you have uh, active you have an active subscription of Azure and in that we are looking for two instances. We need one instance for Azure Open AI and the another instance is for Azure AI search. So I would suggest you to make those two things and keep it ready so that we can just plug in those details over here. So let's get back to this and click on custom copilot. And here you have three different options. So let's try this one chat with your data. And then again, we have a lot many options, but let's go with the one which is having the index. So I'm going to choose Azure AI search and here is the language uh, which you can select. So I'm going with Python and then comes the LLM part. So you need to select which LLM. So right now it is supporting Azure OpenAI and OpenAI. I'm going with Azure OpenAI so that everything will be in my same infrastructure. Now next thing it is asking you uh, is to provide the key which is for the Azure OpenAI. So let me quickly go to my Azure portal and this is my instance. So what you can do is you can just go to Azure OpenAI Studio. Ah, okay, you need not to go to that. Rather you can grab the keys from here. So this is the key uh, which we need to provide over here. So I'm providing the key. Next thing is you need to enter your endpoint. So let's go back here. This is the endpoint which we need to provide. I gave that as well. Now it is asking input Azure OpenAI deployment name. So which deployment name? So for deployment name, you need to uh, go to your studio and here you must be having some deployed version. So I'm going with GPT-35 Turbo. So let's provide this name here. And then you need to provide the folder where you want to place this app. So I will be selecting my folder, the same one, my copilot. And then you need to provide the name of your application. So say SH copilot and press enter. So as soon as you will press enter, you will see that your uh, new instance got like new instance of VS code get oh, gets open and these are the files which got listed. So I will quickly stretch it a bit. Let me pull it here. Okay. So now we have these many files listed over here. It means we are done with our initial configuration or you can say the prerequisites are met. Now the next thing is what we need to do is we need to uh, have a look at these files. So if you want, you can definitely go and check these out. But let's go and sequence. The very first thing is uh, whenever we are working with Python project, we need to create a virtual environment wherein we can install the packages. So in this particular case, we have to create the virtual environment and the requirements.cs file is already ready for us. So this is the file which we need to use 
uh, to create the virtual environment now for creating a virtual environment there are many ways you can go for anyone which you are comfortable with but like i said i want to go with the bare minimum coding in fact no code at all so in this case i will go and run this requirement.cs file using my command palette so here you can search for create environment and then it is asking which kind of environment do you want to create it's re environment or the conda so i will go with the virtual environment the very first choice and then you need to select the python version and this is the file which automatically pops up because it is already part of this particular open instance so provide this name and you can see at the bottom it has started creating the environment for us so let's give it few seconds and you should see something on the left hand side soon so you can see that new entry got added but the process is still going on so let's wait for it and at the same time i will open the terminal for those who are not sure what this requirement.txt file is so this is the file where we used to put all our dependencies along with the versions so that whenever you are setting up the machine or the project somewhere else you need not to go ahead and install each of these manually rather you can just pick this requirement.txt file and create a virtual environment for yourself it is taking time let's give it few more seconds and meanwhile it is creating maybe i can show you other things so we have files like uh, it is under uh, let me think okay so let's go to env and inside this folder you can see there are a lot many different configuration one for dev lock, uh, local test so these are the uh, like files which are holding our keys and the endpoints so what you need to do is there are few things which are still missing like your search settings ai search we have created an instance but we have not provided its endpoint and the key so that thing we need to provide here and apart from that we need to provide the embedding model which we have already not provided so i will pause my video and i will go back and just update these files so the very first file which i am going to update here for the keys and the values is the local user and the second one which i'm going to update is uh, the test user test tool user so these are the two files in which i need to update so i will quickly update and come back so i'm done with the file updates and to reiterate i have updated a few files over here so the one which is having the user so dev user local user and the test tool user so you can go ahead and update this because each of these file uh, have some particular i would say the reason why they are sitting here so if you are testing it you can use the test file if you are running it a local user then you can go with that and this is the one for the dev so i have just updated all three of these next thing what we need to do is we are done with our configuration setting now we need to create and set up the index for our document so for that if you will go to uh, infra uh, not infra you need to go to src then you have indexers and under indexers you can see there are many files listed over here so data is a folder in which you are going to place your files so i'm going with the default case right now because uh, idea here is to showcase you how to plug and play with all these things together so these are the three files if you will look here which are like contour related one is perk one is plan benefits and one is for company profile so these are the files which are provided as an input so i would recommend you to place your files here if you are having any md files with you because this particular code which i am showing you is going to work only for the md file but it is very easy to change for other file types like pdf or even the text files so So this is one thing second thing is you have few files here the most important file which we are going to run is the setup.py so this is the file in 
which they have already written a python code and what this file is doing is uh, the main purpose of this file is to go ahead and create the index for us uh, in azure uh, ai search so if you will look at this the code is straightforward and it is very easy to understand the main functions it is holding is uh, to create the index if it doesn't exist and here is to like the index name and providing all these credentials over here these are the things which we have already set up and it will grab from our respective files so you need not to change this if you are going with the same flow and get data is the file in which they are reading the files so you can see that these are the three files which they are reading so they have just put it as it is but if you have many more files you can definitely write a loop and it is easy to change this code basically what i'm trying to say so let's keep it as it is i just want to show you the end product which we are going to get so next thing is what we need to do is we need to take the setup.py file and run it on our terminal so before running it make sure that you are in your virtual environment because by default sometimes it doesn't take you there so i'm just getting into my virtual environment and once we are in virtual environment you can see that the this thing got changed the prompt got changed so now i will go ahead and just pass in this setup.py to execute so for executing this what you need to do is you just need to type in a command python and the name of the file so i would say src then src we have indexers then we need to say setup.py so let's give it few seconds so it has created the index and if it doesn't wait for five seconds this is a message they have provided and even if it fails things are, would be in place this is this is a transient error or maybe why it is happening i'm not really very sure but it doesn't matter because like they're saying it may happen and you just give a few more seconds and things will be up and running so now index is created so i would recommend you to go to indexes and see if it is really created so this is the index which got created click on this and looks like it is taking few more seconds we can still see the document count is zero so let's give it few more seconds here and this should get updated perfect so now you can see document count is three storage size is also changed as well as the vector index and if you will click on search you will get the index for those so it means that we are good to go and start chatting with our documents so in order to start the chatting what you need to do is you need to click on the teams toolkit then you can start the debugging so if you don't know how to start you can just press f5 otherwise you can also use those command line the menu bar options so i just pressed f5 and you can see that the nice chatbot tool is loaded for our testing so i will quickly say hi just to check whether things are up and running okay so hello how can i assist how can i assist you today uh, what uh, these documents are all about let me ask this question and see if it can come up with an answer so these documents are about contoso electronics a fictional company that specializes in consumer electronics now it is talking about what the first what is the first document what is the second document all about and what is the third document so you can see that how nicely and how easy it was to chat with our own documents and then get it integrated into the teams test app so i believe it's like very fascinating and i'm really very excited to experiment to with this particular feature more and more and i'm looking forward for you to just see how we can utilize this feature because i can see the endless possibilities have opened up for us now we need to see how we can deploy it in production we need to see how we can chat with our pdf how we can integrate this with the other kinds of files so let's see how we can do it and i will try to come up with another video in which we will try to execute the same flow with our pdfs file because if we are using pdf we need to change the code little bit so right now the code they have provided here under get data is for md files so similarly we need to change it a bit so that we can read a different kinds of file like text file or the pdf file and before i stop 
uh, there is another file delete.py so you can use this file to delete the index which we have created and simply you need to run python and the path of the file name and it will go ahead and execute this so that's all i have for today and i hope you enjoyed watching this copilot creation thanks for watching